got my talk from up here, but at some point I'll have to get down. Um, okay, so as Cameron said, this talk is going to be all about black holes and about the science of black holes, but it's also going to be a little bit about art and a little bit about popular culture, and I'm going to talk to you. Sometimes the, the depictions that I show you will not be strictly speaking scientifically accurate, but I will point out when that's the case, so don't worry. Okay, so let's get started. Oh. Okay, got it. Um, so today I'm going to take you through a tour of four different movies, and they're actually all extremely different, um, over the past 40 years. So the first movie I'm going to talk to you about is called The Black Hole. I don't know if any of you have seen it. Yeah. It's, like, it's like an OG Disney picture from the 70s. Then I'm going to, then I'm next going to talk a little bit about Star Trek. So maybe there are some, some Trekkies here. I don't know. Um, and then I'm of course going to talk about Interstellar, which is only appropriate. And then I'm going to talk to you about a movie which is maybe a little less well-known called The High Life. It's like an A24 production from 2019. Um, so they're all very different movies, but they all have black holes on them. So that's, that's what we love. Okay. And I think this is the perfect place to give this talk because we're close to Hollywood and we're also close to Caltech. And of course, as many of you know, Kip Thorne was one of the leaders in representing black holes in cinema. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. Okay, first of all, we need to, <laughs> to, to make sure we're all on the page, the same page about what a black hole is. So as I'm sure many of you know, when you have a really massive star that reaches the end of its life, it gets a bit old, and the fusion processes in the star and the gas pressure um, aren't so strong anymore. And there's basically no pressure to resist gravity and the whole thing collapses. And that's a black hole. It's complete gravitational collapse. And I think one of the things which maybe everyone knows about black holes is that there is a region called the event horizon from which light can never escape. Okay, so that's kind of, that's why it's called black, right? It's, it's a black hole. There's, there's no way that light can escape from this inner region called the event horizon. Okay, so now that we're on the same page, it sort of begs the question, if no light can escape from a black hole, how exactly are we gonna see a picture of one? Like, what, what are we looking at exactly? It's just gonna be, it's gonna be nothing. Well, I think many of you have already seen a very famous picture of a black hole. And that is this. So raise your hand if you've seen this picture. I'm sure you all have. So in 2019, this image was plastered across newspapers all around the world, all across the internet, even if you're not an astronomer, it was very hard to, to not see this picture. Um, and it's famously a picture of a black hole. Um, oh, the very first picture we've ever taken of a black hole. Um, so this is, this is the only image we really have uh, of a black hole, like a real image. And what does it look like to you? I kind of think it looks like a fuzzy donut. It's a little blurry. So it, you know, it looks kind of like when I don't have my glasses on and I'm trying to like squint and see something, it's, it's not super well resolved. Um, but that's okay, because now we're gonna think about what this looks like when we increase our resolution a little bit, when we sort of um, you know, have, a, have a better camera, have a radio interferometer that's a lot bigger, and we can get better resolution. Okay, so maybe we're gonna increase that resolution and it might look something like this. It might look like a donut in space. Well, of course, of course, no. That's not what it's going to look like. Um, and of course, scientists do know the answer to this question. We have some amazing high resolution simulations of black holes. Um, but first of all, we're gonna look at some movies to see what answers they give us and to see how accurate they are in their depictions. So let's get started. So we're gonna start in the 70s. So this is nice and retro. Um, this was a Disney film called The Black Hole. <laughs> awesome. Um, so this is like post Star Wars, um, but maybe not quite as successful. Um, <laughs> and it was definitely before 
before Disney bought Star Wars, so. Uh. And it was probably the first major film that depicted a black hole in any sort of significant way. Um, and it featured in the plot very significantly. So if you look at some of the promotional materials, you'll definitely see a black hole in, in the posters. You know, it's, it's front and center. And to my eyes at least, it looks like it looks like a whirlpool in space. What did you say? Um, so I'm gonna play a little. Is this gonna work? Yes. Okay. So this is a scene from the movie, and if you can't tell what's going on, there's a spaceship that's sort of slowly falling in. Okay. There we go. Ooh. There it goes. <laughs> okay, beautiful. That's the white hole. <laughs> That's the white hole, yeah, like, let's, let's go, baby. Okay, um, out the other end. Okay, so wh what are my thoughts on this? Um, okay, no, I have some positive thoughts. I have some positive thoughts. So, first of all, the way, at least from what I read, the way they created this sort of whirlpool structure showing the, showing the black hole or the material around the black hole is they actually had a tank of liquid and they had some, some residue. And they lit the tank um, from below in a certain way that you couldn't see the reflection on the water. So it was actual like physical effects. So this is one of the first movies that used some form of digital effects, but a lot of their effects were still just, you know, actual physical things that they, that they um, filmed. So in that way, I think they actually did a good job. Like it does really look like there's this fluid circulating around the black hole which is really what happens in space. In space, black holes do have accretion disks, which is just a whole bunch of stuff swirling around the black hole. And it looks pretty realistic because they're literally filming like water and fluid um, in a whirlpool around the black hole. Okay, so that's, that's one thing that I like about it. Also, the black hole is black. So that's, that's, another, <laughs> that's another pro. Um, okay, but what, what do they do wrong? <laughs> Okay. Well, there are actually quite a few things, but I'll just I'll just start with this. So, as I just, if you remember, I told you that black holes collapse from stars. Stars are spherical objects, or at least mostly pretty spherical. They have a three-dimensional shape, and black holes just collapse from all directions. They also end up pretty spherical. They might be slightly oblate, but they have a three-dimensional structure. So, so they're more like this. I don't know if all of you can see the screen, but they actually have a three-dimensional shape. They're not this flat whirlpool like you're seeing in the Disney movie, sorry. Um, okay, so that's, that's one of my complaints. Um, the other complaint is there's no spaghettification of the ship. It just sort of slowly... <laughs> the, the ship is almost the same size as the black hole, and yet... <laughs> No spaghettification whatsoever. Anyway, okay. So that's, that's, there are a few complaints with that one. Okay, so this brings us to Star Trek. So maybe there are some Star Trek fans in the audience. Non-canonical. <laughs> um, but I just chose this movie because I wanted to find a science fiction movie with a black hole that was somewhere in between the black hole and Interstellar. And I wanted to find one that was like well in the regime of like CGI. Because I thought, well, with all of these improved visual affection, effects in movies, surely the depiction of the black hole will be amazing, right? Like, will we'll be so much better 30 years later, right? No. I, in my opinion, um, no. Okay. So now, this looks a little blurry, but hopefully, oh, this is the one where I can go down. So I'm not going to put you through all of this. Um, we're going to start right here. So I'm going to, I don't know how much of the screen you guys can see, so I'm going to narrate it a little bit. There was some red material which ignited and it turned into the black hole. The black hole looks like uh, a hole with all this lightning surrounding it and there's a ship stuck in it. Um, and everyone's panicking, uh, the bad guys are upset, um, the stick is still <laughs> the ship is still sticking out of the black hole, and at some point, it, it should explode, but we're gonna wait until it explodes. <laughs> Boom! Okay, okay, there we go. There we go, okay. 
good enough. Okay. So you get the idea. So there are a few differences compared to the depiction in the black hole from 1978, 79, sorry. <laughs> um, but there are honestly like a lot of similarities, maybe too many similarities. It still looks a lot like a whirlpool. It still doesn't have any three-dimensional shape. Um, but there is, there is one thing that I do like about it, and that's that it looks pretty shiny. It looks like there's lots of light coming around the stuff that surrounds the black hole. And that's pretty accurate astrophysically. Black holes are often very, very bright. You know, some of these supermassive black holes and galaxies um, in the centers of galaxies outshine the entire galaxy. So having a lot of brightness, a lot of, a lot of light um, surrounding the material, sorry, emitted from the material surrounding the black hole is quite accurate. So when astronomers look at black holes, there are sort of certain parts of the black hole which um, you know, are known to emit light. So the accretion disk obviously has a lot of stuff which is moving at you know, very high speeds close to the black hole. Um, so these, this heats up due to friction and it produces light, sort of like thermal black body emission, right? You also have a relativistic jet that's launched due to like magnetic field processes and a corona which, which could be like the base of this jet. And these are sort of the classic things that astronomers will see around a black hole. Okay, so the depiction in Star Trek is not quite like this. It just looks like a bunch of lightning around the black hole. Um, but to be fair, the black hole they produced in that one was an artificial black hole, which was produced by the red matter. So it's, it's not really, strictly speaking, an astrophysical black hole. So I'll give them a pass on that. Um, and then we won't talk about that anymore. We'll go straight to interstellar. Which, which I'm sure you're all waiting for. So this is very often said to be the most scientifically accurate depiction of a black hole in film. And we'll, we'll discuss that, don't worry. Um, it is certainly leaps and bounds better in its depiction of black holes than any prior film. There's absolutely no question. Um, so I'm going to show you a little movie like I've been doing. Okay, first of all, I love the scales, right? Like, you can see this is really, really a massive black hole. And this is much more accurate because it's the, the spaceship isn't experiencing any spaghettification, but it makes sense because it's a very massive black hole, right? So the, the tidal forces are not as strong. Um, you're also seeing a lot of other interesting structures, which we haven't seen in any of the previous clips. Waterfalls. Yeah, well, yeah. So, I mean, look at this. Um, you can see the accretion, there's something that looks like an accretion disk, right? And then you have this sort of halo around the black hole. So let's, let's talk about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, good question. Okay, so many of you might know that when you're in a really strong gravitational field, light no longer goes in straight lines. So if you shine a flashlight on Earth, you expect the light rays to just go straight ahead. If you, sh if you shine a light on a black hole, um, the light would curve around and, and sort of curve back onto itself and, and into the black hole. And indeed, inside of the event horizon, the light is completely trapped inside of the black hole, as I talked about. Okay, so what does this mean for like when we see images of black holes? Um, so this is the famous image I mentioned earlier of the event horizon telescope that was taken by the event horizon telescope of M87, which is a black hole. Um, and essentially what we're seeing is all of this light bending around the black hole and producing an image that looks something like this. So you see this really bright ring there is, is the photon ring where light is orbiting around the black hole. Um, and essentially if you sort of blur this guy, you see the, the image on the right, okay? Um, so that's what's happening around black holes. And what this means when you have an accretion disk in the picture is that the, the far side of the disk, you can actually see it, even though the black hole's in the way, because the light will bend around the black hole, and you'll be able to see the far side of the disk. So that's that halo that sits behind the black hole. Um, and yeah, so that's what we're seeing there. Okay, so that's kind of fabulous, right? So it's, it's a spherical shape, lovely. We have a disk emitting light, and we have the light being lensed. Now, is there anything still missing? I'm wondering, does anyone know of anything that's still missing? 
What's inside? That's a good one. Did you say motion? Oh, yes. Okay, fabulous. Yeah, okay. So this is a paper um, talking about the science of interstellar. And there are these three images in the paper. Okay, there's A, B, and C. Um, so as the material around the black hole moves, so as you pointed out, the motion of the material around the black hole, there's going to be essentially Doppler shifting or Doppler beaming. So there's going to be a change in the color of the light, depending on whether it's moving away from you or towards you. And there's also going to be a change in the intensity of the light. Okay, so this image over here, C, you can see the, the Doppler beaming effect. Like on one side, it's much brighter than the other, right? Okay, now Christopher Nolan um, decided that this fully realistic accretion disk in this figure C looked exceedingly lopsided and you couldn't even discern the black hole shadow. So I, I think you can kind of see what he means, right? If I can get, oh no, it doesn't, okay. So it, you can't actually see the full shape very easily. You can't see like that nice neat black hole because there's other sort of darkness that kind of obscures it. So, yeah, he didn't like it, and it was self-evidently unacceptable, apparently. This was just a statement of fact in the paper, um, which I, I feel like is more of an opinion than um, a statement of fact, but okay. Um, so this brings us to the final film, which may be, I don't know, just judging by the response in the audience, this might be the film which is least watched in this group here. Um, it's quite a small film. It was um, produced by A24. Um, and in my opinion, it was the most accurate depiction of a black hole in a major fiction film, okay? Never heard of it. I never heard of it. <laughs> um, I actually don't recommend uh, <laughs> that children watch this. <laughs> um, for various reasons, but anyway, we'll continue. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, okay, well, that's all right. So we can't watch the video, but that's okay, I have pictures, I have pictures. Okay. Um, so, as I mentioned, we have Doppler beaming. So we have one side much brighter than the other side, and we have lensing, which shows us the far side of the disc. Now I'm gonna show you an image from High Life. Essentially, there's an image with Robert Pattinson's face and a black hole that looks like this. And that's what I wanted to show you. Um, so it was, it was a really accurate black hole with the Doppler beaming effect perfectly um, visible. So, okay, um, the, the film is basically, it's, it's quite slow. Um, you have Robert Pattinson on a spaceship with his daughter. Um, but it is a little dark, I would say. So, you know, it, it, some of you might like it. It's, it's maybe not a film for everyone, um, but, but check it out if you like. You can see the Doppler beaming in the black hole. And, and this film was also made in collaboration with an astrophysicist. So I think, okay, so there are sort of two, two statements which I want to make. First of all, this is not to criticize Interstellar. All the work by Kip Thorne and all the people who worked on Interstellar was incredible. And they, you know, took the depiction of black holes to an, a whole other level. They certainly knew this effect existed and they certainly calculated it. It was just Christopher Nolan's, you know, directing choices, which is perfectly valid. Um, the second point is, I think whenever uh, there are black holes featured in movies, they should be depicted as realistically as possible. I think this is not just me as a scientist saying this. I think if you look at the last two movies, um, if you realize how creepy and how weird and how counterintuitive the real black holes in our universe are, I think it's much more emotionally affecting and powerful. So that's, that's my pitch as to why scientific accuracy and art go perfectly hand in hand. Um, and with that, I'll, I'll finish. <laughs>